Caddis Maximus here, just doing a quick teardown video of this old Oster bread machine. Figured it might be a fun little thing. There's a few teardown videos of various bread machines. Uh, these things are super common. The most common wedding gift in the United States, I believe. And they're kind of neat to try to get uh, a few parts out of. And figured, why not? Anyway, bread machines, you just put in the ingredients and supposed to mix them up. They never really work very well. I never liked the bread that's come out of bread machines, but people seem to really like them just because uh, it's simple. And they do have a pretty or a fairly geared down motor. Many times just using belt systems. So this is just a cooking tray and it has a, uh, a mixer. This one's actually pretty darn loose. I'm really surprised about that. Barely holding in there. Let's see if we can't pop that clip off. This feels like a cast aluminum piece. We've got this little thing on here, which indeed is starting to wallow out. Interesting. So this part was eventually going to fail, and then this was going to stop being able to mix bread. Then we can pull this out if we can't. How oh, pulling it out, that little thing popped off. I suppose that it's more intentional, just so that it can be easier to clean. And just popping that off so you can see they actually have uh, an interesting system where they have it sealed. And then this is like a ceramic seal to be able to take the heat and prevent uh, most particles from coming through it. So that's kind of interesting. That was most of the upper part. These things aren't super complicated. Just has a heater, a little bit of electronics. Let's go ahead and pull the bottom of it off. Actually, there are a few screws around the edge of the top. Let's see if the top pops off pretty easily if I really do need to pull the bottom off first. Always kind of fun for me to take apart stuff and kind of watch it. I watch it on YouTube just to see what's inside. It's always been the point of these kind of teardown videos just to see what's inside, you know, and see how things are engineered and built. And this Oster is definitely not the, the most expensive bread machine out there. And you can tell, you know, many times these types of uh, components really show their. Uh, build quality just quickly looking inside even though the outside may seem to be just fine all right it does look like I need to work on getting off the bottom because this whole tub is screwed in the feet are screwed in so I may save those for future use and they are partially holding on the bottom of this interestingly enough This is where the impact drivers really help out. They're just such great tools for just disassembly work like this. It's just super fast. There's our power cord going up through there. And this is indeed a belt drive. A lot of them are apparently like this where they are just belt drives. And a plastic nylon pulley. I'm surprised at the bottom of the hotter part, the hot spindle, even though the spindle on the motor is aluminum. I kind of like that. I'm a little curious about this. It's a corrugated tooth belt. The teeth add more friction, more surface area, just like multi-tooth uh, serpentine belts on automobiles. And they have the teeth cut on order, the little undercuts on the motor pulley, but not on the plastic one. So obviously this motor is being used in a variety of different products. Power cords held on by one of these pinch clips. These are things are always an adventure, but you just grab, find where the little recess is, and you just have to try to grab and push them in through whatever orifice they came from. Many times they'll actually tilt up, and sometimes they are just so tight where you can't just, you can barely get them out of there. Really can be pretty frustrating. Just got this one started here. Pop that up. Kind of work the other side up. Geez, come on now. I'm just going to cut that off. These things are always a bear, and you sometimes really have to battle with them just to try to get the the darn components out of there. The way these things just rock up, sometimes they get real jammed and you really have to crush them. 
just to get them out. It's non-user replaceable, or it is user replaceable, just not easily. It's not designed to be regularly user replaceable. They do have a high temperature nylon piece of nylon wire insulation. That's a little valuable item. Let's go ahead and get this belt off of here. We'll just run it up on the edge. There's our little belt. And now our cover pops right off. So you have to remove the upper screws, remove the bottom. You do have to relieve the power cord one way or another. Once you do that, then you'll finally be able to remove the, the cover on the unit. And really not a whole lot there. The motors are surprisingly large because they have to and or have a gear reduction because they got to move around all that bread dough. You do have a couple motors. Because one is the mixing motor, but it doesn't just heat this up. It's like a small convection oven. There's a vent in here on the side. And then there are these holes around the edge. And so the airflow flows from there in around the holes to mix air to evenly heat the bread. And so there's going to be a fan motor right here just for that. And it just has a single sealed silicone boot and it's just floating. It's just pressing against the side of this bin. It's kind of funny a little bit. Also, the main motor has a large plastic fan, see-through plastic fan on top of that. That's kind of interesting. These also do have a safety switch or something that prevents them from running when the bucket's not in there. When you insert the bucket, it has these little fingers on the side. Down the bottom of one of these slots inside here, there's a little lever that activates the switch. That's how it knows the bucket's inserted. And then this little bulb would be our thermostat. If we flip this over this way, there's our little temperature sender with the little blue wires right there. Pretty basic electronics. Let's get these motors off of here. And inside that, this little bulb that was the temperature sensor actually is physically contacts and spring loaded the side of the bowl, so it gives it more accurate temperature reading, which is a, not a bad design. Here's our little main motor run capacitor. It's, at least it has the wire colors printed on it. And interestingly enough, it has a little inductor on it as well. I've never seen that on a motor run capacitor before. A lot of the assembly is the screws that hold this main bucket down into this bottom plate. You have to remove the large pulley from the bottom plate. As soon as you do that, then you're going to be able to uh, finally get this bucket up. And I, I don't have a service manual, it's just these things are kind of obvious like this. The impact drivers are also great for these types of screws. Like this has been used, these screws have been in an oven, they can be really jammed. And impact drivers are great in this situation. That and the hand impact drivers, if you have really jammed Phillips screws. Actually, these aren't so bad. Sometimes these things, and these are stainless. And that should be the, everything, or at least this part. Yeah, that goes. And then here's the little intermediary section. This isn't going to have any seals in it. This is just the transfer from the plastic pulley to the inner bucket. And see, now this thing will finally cooperate just a little bit here. And there's our other little micro switch for controlling or for it to detect that the bucket's in there. I'll actually just go back to the video to make sure that these three wires are easy to hook up to the capacitor. The main input power wires, I'll just take a quick look at the video. But it's kind of neat to find one of these motors that actually has an integrated fan. And three well-glued screws hold it on. Should be able to get these off. Yeah, they didn't fill in the Phillips too much. They really didn't want those screws coming out of there. That one's filled up. That's going to be hard to deal with. That one's going to be really hard to deal with. There's our main chassis. Got that motor off. And then here's our motor. Interestingly, it had this must be for vibration. Just a plastic cap on the bottom. No real particular reason to have that. This motor does indeed look like a sleeve bearing motor. I don't... That is not ball bearings. This is known as an induction motor. What's interesting is they pull up this fan so it pulls air through the bottom, through the motor, and then blows it out through the top, cool air from the bottom, which is wise. But this motor also did have its own already integrated fan. 
Oh, and one of the easiest way to tell if these motors have any ball bearings is the spindle, the way it pulls in and out like that, just lets us know that we only have sleeve bearings. But it's still kind of neat if you have a few projects or something uh, to use a motor with. It'd be like great for driving fans or something along those lines. Another little tip, these little areas where it looked like it was just feet for the lid to sit down on were actually little plastic caps. And you just have to use a sharp tool to poke in there and pop them out. It always leaves a little bit of damage. Not really any way around that. And that's what ends up holding this bucket on is through those four top screws. And we'll just zap those out and we'll finally have the bucket off of this thing. Like so. Pretty easy. Now let's see if we can't get this. Oh, a whole bunch of stuff fall out of there. Let's see if we can't get this bucket out. There was one more temperature sensor on the side of the bucket. This is an overload potential or sensor. So if it just starts overheating, something shorts out in electronics, this is a kind of a mechanical safety switch that will cut off the element if that, a situation like that occurs. Now we just have the last little bit of electronics in this teeny, tiny little motor that I kind of want. It's interesting they have this little plastic cover here. Uh, and you just undo, oddly enough, five screws. Oh, our little boot fell off. And voila, there's our little cover and our electronics. We'll just pull this motor out here. If we can get it to fish out of this situation, it's a little bit... There we go funky to get out of there. I did already cut the wires and then this is just like a little tiny kind of bathroom fan motor. And it just sucks air in through here and blows it out through here. Kind of a neat little motor. And last but not least our control panel. This does not use very high quality components so I'm not going to pull anything off. The only thing that's interesting is the speakers actually stood off and sitting over the top of some resistors. Never really seen that before. And then there's just there's our basic display with basic little buttons and some status LEDs. LEDs. Anyway, that was my weird little teardown video of an uh, Oster bread machine. And with a little bit of explanation as, of what I know about the internal components. And then, of course, why I do it. You know, in this case, I got a couple of nice center few or a couple of nice... I guess I wouldn't be fans. This is a, a neat little fan just because it's such an odd kind of positioning, how it uh, mounts in there. So maybe handy in certain situations due to its shape and being centrifugal. And then uh, got a decent sized motor to use for some kind of project. And what's nice about this motor, since it has a real big extra integrated fan that is pretty darn warped, but nonetheless, this fan uses a huge amount of air relative for this motor. So this actually means that I could use this in a uh, either higher temperature situation or a situation where the motor is just more heavily loaded just because it has all this extra built-in cooling. So I think that's kind of neat. And, uh, you, know, for, you know, getting a motor like this out of a free bread machine is just a little bit of time taking apart. That's probably a $50 motor or something if you were to order it online. It always seems that motors are outrageously expensive when they're by themselves. And power tools are notorious for that. Take any, you know, newer power, especially corded power tool, you know, a DeWalt drill. Go look at how much the field and then the rotor is or the armature for the motor on that drill. You'll find that just a field and armature are more expensive than the tool is just to buy a new one at the store. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And we'll be back to our normal reviews in the next video. Thanks.